Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video I want to talk about how you can save multiple comments. Um, I'm using the comments as an example but um, what I wanted to show you in a broader way or a broader term is how you can actually do a one-to-many relationships using Power Apps. Um, and a good example for that is you know you have an app where you want to store notes over there or comments um, and then how you can do that such as where you have only one entry you want to be able to go and have multiple notes or comments over there. Um, so in the you know, as I talk about that, I want to kind of tell you what you don't want to do. Um, you know, say you have a list or a table, uh, you don't want to keep adding more and more columns based on the number of notes that you're going to add or how many you know comments that you're going to add because there's just no way you can anticipate what you'll need. Um, you know, you think that okay, this is a list or a table, and I can only foresee I'm going to have maybe five or six notes or comments added over there. But then in that what if scenario where you suddenly needed seven or eight more, then your entire table structure um, you know, just became uh, useless over there. Um, so what you want to do is you want to actually do a one to many relationships and a good way to do that is using IDs. So in the IDs, once you've done that with the one to many relationships, you know, you've got a primary table um, and then or a list and then you've got a secondary one. And the secondary one is where you go ahead and save all these comments. And then after that, you don't really care how many of them are there because you're saving them by the rows as against by the columns. So let me kind of walk you through how that works. And here's a scenario. Um, in this app, I'm actually going to save a lot of notes um, based on you know, the entries. Um, so initially, um, you know, I would have the ID, the full name, the description. And then I would also start off by doing the you know, creating note one column, creating note two columns, three, so on and so forth. And then, you know, that's when I said is that you keep adding more and more node columns. And, um, you know, in the what if scenario that you had, say, four nodes in this case, node columns, but you needed five. So this was the original structure and the idea, and you really don't want to do this. What you do want to do is, um, and, you know, like I said, you just run out of columns. Um, what you do want to do is you want to break them down into two separate tables. So in the first table, I just call it as a primary table or list. And I keep saying list because this, you know, this could work for SharePoint as well. Um, that's where you keep the primary information. You keep an, you know, an ID over there, you keep your user's name, um, and then you keep the description. Whatever it is that is not going to get changed, that's where you put in the ID one over there. In the secondary one, uh, you do go ahead and have you know, the ID for that, this, and that's you know, for this, the secondary table or list. But you also go ahead and get a copy of the original list. And you can, you know, you call that as ID, you can change that to the primary ID, but you want to have a copy of that because that's how you do the one to many relationships. Then you can go ahead and add notes, but in that notes now, you don't add other columns, you just add them as rows. Because now you have that way to set up the relationship. So I kind of wanted to display this to you guys so you actually understand visually how this works. That no longer am I adding more and more notes or comments column. I'm actually going to keep adding them as rows. And then as you can see that the data gets filled, um, the primary ID in the secondary list or cable, or the table, that's just the primary ID, which just gives you a count of how many rows you have. But then the primary ID, which is a copy over here, that's just getting the copy from the first list or the primary list or table. And over there, you can see in this example, I've just put that as one, 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 because that sh takes the relationship from the one to many. So. I'm going to actually show a demonstration to you as an example. Uh, in this example, it's just a school teacher, or you know, is going ahead and putting in comments um, over the you know the annual year about their students. Um, and so every time an entry is put in for the student, uh, that was that's going to be the entry in the primary column or the primary list um, or table. And then after that, I've created a secondary table which goes ahead and captures all the comments about the student throughout this year. Um, and so that's what I'm going to show to you. Also, in this app, I've also gone and added the score um, so that the student, I mean, the teacher can go ahead and keep track of what the score is for whatever comment was put in. And most importantly, it captures the timestamp. So that's the demo I'm going to do over here. I'm using school as an example, but this could be for anything. It could be for a project and you go ahead and add comments for that. It could be for a engineer who's going ahead and putting in information about a certain location. It's just, you know, there's a whole bunch of options over there. But the primary agenda for this video is to show that one to many relationships um, using primary IDs. So let me jump in and show you the demo. The demo in this case is basically that app. Um, and I've already gone and put in some entries over here. Um, so let me go ahead and you know walk you through the app and then we'll kind of deep dive into that. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the record. Um, the record in this case, I've already gone ahead and selected uh, Elijah, but you know I can um, change that and 
search for the name. This this is the easier part, so I'm not going to emphasize too much on that. Yeah, just this one over here is the full name. Um, the second one, it's automatically populated from the way the table is in the back end that I select the student and it automatically populates the grade. And then here's the na name. It says, Elijah is one of the brightest um, in this class and also the youngest. So that's just a note. So that entry now gets saved and it is being saved in the primary table. And that's what you can see over here. There's the primary table and the note over here. Now throughout the year, this uh, Elijah school teacher um, wants to go ahead and add all the information and that's the comments. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and add the entry. This information already comes populated from the first table, but now I'm gonna start adding some comments. In the comments over here, there's two things. I can add the comments and I can put in the score. So it says, it says Elijah did very well in the um, school trip. Just put that in over there. And I go ahead and save that and then submit it. Again, it takes me back to that home screen over there. Um, but what I can do now is I can always go back in and I can go and look at the add comments and it shows the previous comment. Uh, it shows three things. It shows the comment, it gives me a timestamp and it also shows me what the score was. I can go ahead and keep adding more and more and more because it's saving it to another table altogether. Um, so I don't have to worry about columns. So let me, let me show you how that data structure or the table schema is in the back end. Um, for the sake of this example, which I'll be sharing with you guys um, in the Power um, Apps community, I'll share the app and this table over there, this Excel spreadsheet. Um, so you guys will have a copy of that as well. So I'm gonna go to the student record because that's where I'm saving the data. And you'll see a couple of uh, tables over there. So in my OneDrive, uh, where the Excel table is, first one is just the primary record. And so that's the one over here. This is the entry over here for Elijah ID number. Elijah's primary ID is four. Uh, it picked up the grade, uh, the date that I put in, and the notes. So this is in the primary table. Um, I'm gonna skip the student one because the student was just for the lookup. I mean, in, in the lookup section, it just pulled out based on the name I selected, it automatically pulls up the grade. Um, but it's the comments over here. See, in the comments, it has a primary ID because that's just the primary ID for the table. But if you look over here, this is the one where I'm going ahead and saving all the information about the school. So the first one was Elijah did very well in school. And over here, I'm saving that primary ID information. Because if you go over here, see, that ID over here is being stored in the record ID over there. And then also all the information. So that is basically the table structure. Um, let's go look at the app a little bit more in detail. So there's, when I build the app, I build it in four different screens. The first screen is pretty simple. Um, it is just a home screen. So I've got all these, you know, the, the label over here, the button over here, this is just the gallery. In the gallery, all I have are a couple of things coming in. You know, there's the full name, um, uh, full name control over here, which is just the label control. Again, another label control. And then I've gone ahead and added this edit icon. That edit icon helps me navigate to that edit screen. The home screen is just pretty straightforward. Um, in the um, add a record button, the add the record button adds me to, uh, takes me to the add screen. So let's go and do that. In the add screen, I've actually just used the patch function. Over here, I went ahead and grabbed the full name. The full name came from that you know, Excel table that I showed. But if I go ahead and put in the full name, which is from this um, you know, drop down, and I can pick the student name, it automatically populates the grade. Um, grade is just using a very simple filter um, function or expression over here, um, where based on the selection of the full name from the combo box, it automatically goes ahead and populates the student grade. See, that happens over here, and that's why it happens. It directly gets uh, populated over here. Um, I want this automated and I don't want the end users to have the functionality to change it. That's why I went and changed the display mode to view. And then over here, I went ahead and added the notes. And then finally on the submit button, um, I did two things. One is um, I wanna record that primary ID. And the reason, I mean, the, and the way I was able to do that primary ID was using the max uh, function expression. Um, and it goes to the records, um, which is basically that Excel spreadsheet over here. Uh, in that Excel spreadsheet over here. It basically goes and does, give me the most maximum ID number existing right now, and I'm gonna add one to it. And that's how I'm building my ID column in the primary 
uh, a primary table. And I just go ahead and save that to a variable, a global variable in this case. And then after that, I just use this patch function and in the patch function, I'm just saving the ID. This ID is coming from this little um, expression or function we did over here. And then all the other information, full name and going ahead and you know saving the grade, going ahead and adding the notes. And then the date, the today's date timestamp and the date and the timestamp, I'm just using the now expression for that. And then just as a good practice, I go ahead and reset some of the, the labels over here and then navigate back to the home screen. So and when I go navigate back to the home screen, um, next thing I did was, if you recall, I went ahead and clicked on the edit um, button, or in this case it was the, uh, the pencil, and I went ahead and clicked on the edit one, it took me to the edit screen. So let's go take a look at that screen. Now in the edit screen, the look is almost the same as adding, but I've gone ahead and added this, this um, button over here. So the edit screen, I made it a lot more simple. Um, I actually added the edit form. But one thing I did in the edit form is I went ahead and made it all view. So the edit form, um, the data source is basically straight from the record, but the item is coming from what was selected in the home gallery. Again, very simple, very straightforward, nothing new about that over here. And all the population, it's automatically populated, you know, the student name, the grade, and the notes. But then the comments, that's where the, you know, the major um, change is happening over here and the major purpose of this video recording altogether. So when I click on the add comments, it takes me to the comment screen. And in the comment screen, I've gone ahead and done a few things. First things first is this is another gallery that's coming in. And in the gallery, I filtered it where that record ID, and if you recall in the just a few seconds ago, I talked about the record ID where I did that max count and I saved it to the primary ID. Um, in that record ID, I'm selecting to see that in the comment section, I just want information that is being that whose record ID matches everything from the primary side. So in the comment section, it has its own table. I want that to be matched from everything on that. And it made more sense when I actually talk about the save button over here. So say this is a new entry we just put in and activated for Elijah. And here's this first comment. I come in here, I fill the comment, I go ahead and put in a score and I save it. Um, the save takes me back to that uh, edit screen over there because I'm doing all the saving to the edit screen. And in this case over here, I am saving, you know, using the patch function. Um, um, actually, I'm, I'm not saving it back to the, the record screen over there, or the records table, because that's already saved. In this submit, in this patch function, again, remember it's in the edit screen, it's not the add screen, in the edit screen, I'm submitting it to the comments table over there. And in the comments table, using the patch function, I say that it's ID column. Again, do a very simple thing. I'm recording the max count, uh, just the max record. Um, and I'm going ahead and adding adding it over there. Um, and then I make sure that I, I've created a record column. That record column is similar as the primary ID, which I get from the previous table over there. And then I go ahead and sell, you know, whatever is the record ID from the selected, I save it over there. And then I'm also getting the comments and I'm also getting the score and it just saves it over there. It's this section over here. That's how I'm doing the one too many relationships and that's how I'm able to save that. So um, and in fact, over here, there was a slight mistake. It's not the max for the record. It is the max for, go ahead and refresh that. It's not for the record, but it is for the comments. And that just takes care of that. So again, the same thing. Let me just go over that again, because this is the key thing is in the edit screen, when I'm saving it, it is saving the a new record ID because that just shows me how many comments that I have. But the primary ID from the original records list is being saved over here on the record ID because that's how I do the one too many relationships. So you guys want to kind of focus on this one over here because once again, when I do this type of information, you know, setting it up, I'm able to save um, all this information into that one drive and that Excel spreadsheet in that OneDrive. So let me do another example and you guys can actually see how this is working. Go ahead and save it. Publish it. And in fact, in this case, I can just play it directly from the app. And I build this as a mobile app. So the student score. And I'll go ahead and add another student. I'll add a record, 
and we'll just pick grade uh, Shonika did has significantly improved in the last six months Let's see that submit it's going ahead and saving it into the primary list of a uh, primary um, table that information shows up over here now I can go ahead and keep adding comments so I'm going to click on that edit over there again if you remember this was in that um, um, the edits uh, in the edit screen over there and then I went ahead and added a gallery um, so that gallery was by default grayed out but now I'm going to add uh, actually it wasn't a ga ga gallery it was the edit form and the edit form over here was based on what was selected on the home gallery um, and I also went ahead and made it view and now I'm going to keep adding comments by default since there was no comments added the section was um, this section is empty even though if you remember in the app there's a gallery over there but let's go ahead and add the first comment it says um, I had a great day at the field trip and give a score save it it hasn't saved yet the saving is happening in the submit button over here in this edit screen and I'm going ahead and saving it but now if I go back in again and I look at the comment that data was saved in that gallery over here um, which is again that gallery is pointing it pointing to the comments table which is saved in that OneDrive it captured the time it captured the comment and also what was the score I gave if I keep adding it it adds more and more information over there it says um, you know finished all lunch all of the lunch that was provided save it submit let's go back in take a look and now you can see just that and again this is where the filtering of the IDs are happening so that all I can see over here is tied to that one student even though there's multiple entries that are being added over there so once again, let's just go back and look at that. If I refresh it, you'll see that this was just updated. And when I click on that, we'll see two tables. One of them will be the record table. And in the record table, um, we'll see the new student's name over here, Shranika. You know, all the information, there's the primary ID over here, which is added in the record table. Now if we go to the comment section, that primary ID, I've called it as the record ID because I've kind of named it with that table over here. And then we've got two entries, two IDs with our five. That is the record ID. The primary ID just basically shows the count over there. And then from this section, I'm going to keep adding more and more. So this one to many relationship is fantastic because now you don't have to have you know, that number of columns set. It's just all based on the rows and we don't really care how many rows there are because you can keep adding them. So I hope this uh, video kind of walked you through how um, you can understand this works. This is the great way to actually go ahead and set up specifically for things such as comments or, you know, say you have a field technician who has to go and take several pictures of this, some home that needs to be renovated and you want to, you know, you have no idea of how many pictures that has to be taken. Um, this again is a great example of that. And you know, there's other situations where you need to go ahead and do a survey and you're going to have notes, or in this case, a school teacher needs to be able to put comments for a student throughout the year, this is the great way to do that. So hope this video helped you. Hope I walked through you know, everything that you need to, needed to do. In the blog, I've also gone ahead and provided um, some of the expressions or the, or the formulas that you need. And then you will have a copy of the MSAPP file or the app, and you will have a copy of the Excel spreadsheet. So hope you guys can take that and learn. Thanks.